Upper Echelon is brought to you by Deloitte for innovative thinking and thorough strategic planning. Turn to Deloitte. Susan Luxana, the Chief Executive of First Rand, is in our focus in Upper Echelon uh, today. And Susan, I was going through my notes. We had an interview on the old Upper Echelon exactly 10 years ago, can you believe? Oh, really? Already? And uh, things have really developed since then. You've, you've been shooting the lights out. Going from the early days of, uh, of, of your involvement back then, it was a telecom. Uh, now you're back in the financial services sector. Was, it, was there ever a chance that telecom was going to be, or the telecommunications was going to grab your heart? Yes, there was a chance because I mean, it is an industry which is really interesting. It is dynamic. It changes all the time. And technology drives a lot of things that we do. And uh, I did think, you know, I was going to spend a bit more time there. But, of course, you know, when I got the opportunity to go to First Rand, I uh, realized that there is a component uh, within the banking industry, in fact, which deals a lot with technology as well. So I wasn't completely lost uh, to the telecoms industry. How, how life might have been different had you stayed with telecom? I wasn't going to stay with telecom for more than 10 years. I always believe that, uh, especially if you are a CEO of an organization, it is important for your own personal growth as well as the growth of the organization to move. And I think 10 years max is just about the right time to be in one organization so there was no way i was going to be in telecom more than eight years in fact i was there for eight years but you know for me it just felt right that it was the time to move on are you giving us a tip now that uh, you're looking to move on from first rand well i've been in the current position for only just over two years and uh, clearly i've been with first rand for an additional three years before that uh, that therefore gives me about five years. Um, and yes, I think in, in, in a number of years, you know, I'm not sure exactly when. It depends clearly you know, on a number of things, including uh, whether or not I will continue having fun a couple of years' time from now, which I, at the moment I'm having absolute uh, fun. Uh, and also you know, the direction that the organization may be going at that stage. Uh, but, you know, I do intend not to stay for more than 10 years since I took over as a, as a group CEO. So it's still a long way to go. Nobody needs to get nervous at first round just yet. But interesting you make that point because in, well, in uh, six years' time you'll be 60. And Eugene Meyer, a former governor of the Federal Reserve in America and the father of um, the lady who, the Iron Lady of the Washington Post, um, you, you might remember that she was the lady who brought down uh, the whole Watergate affair, um, uh, Catherine, Catherine Graham, she, he said that people learn from 20 to 40, earn from 40 to 60, and serve from 60 onwards. Is that what you have in mind, to serve perhaps uh, more in the, in the national interest thereafter? I do serve even right now. I think it's something that we all have to do, especially if we occupy privileged positions of being on top of organizations. And clearly, as I retire from uh, first rand one day, I do hope that I will give some more back because of the experience that I would have had. But I do not see myself retiring in the classical sense. In other words, I will probably be involved in business for many years to come. I may split my time slightly differently from uh, how I work today, uh, but I don't, don't really see myself slowing down that much, to be honest. When I say serving, uh, more from a national perspective, have you ever thought of politics one day as being a possibility? Uh, not at all. Complicated uh, as it is, I don't think it's a, an environment that I would uh, really like to see myself in. I think it is important that I interact with politics and uh, make a contribution to the extent that I can, uh, which is something that I do even today, but not being a politician itself. Uh, and I don't think I will ever be a politician as such. The contribution that you're making to this uh, society as well is in many ways not quite recognized. I, I was digging around on the on the internet and found a website with your family history. Siswet, to go back 400 years in your family is quite an eye-opener given that uh, so much of those records weren't written down back in those days. Uh, if, if only we could have more of uh, more families doing this kind of thing, but what motivated you? Well, I guess it was a journey of self-discovery, of really being curious about our roots and our family. And I was very fortunate, uh, in fact, when we were putting this together with our family, 
that we still have, uh, and, and at that stage when we wrote it, which is about three years ago now, uh, had a number of people within the family who knew uh, the history of the family quite uh, intimately. And some of them have since passed on. And we thought it was important, especially for the young generation, to understand their roots, but even for ourselves to understand where we come from. And, uh, you know, digging and looking through information, we're very fortunate to find um, through the archives of the University of Kosovo Natal some of the information which made reference to our family, in fact, which went back uh, to the 1600s, uh, which is where the 400 plus years come from. It's a fascinating tale, and I would recommend anybody to go and uh, read that and see perhaps an alternative history uh, to the one that uh, was propagated in this country for many, many years. Yeah, I think it's something that I guess all families go through now and again. You know, uh, I've come across a number of people who've looked at uh, our website, our family website, and uh, they've been inspired by it and they've started, you know, doing something similar. And uh, I think it is really important for all of us to have some point of reference. And we've learned a lot from our forefathers and what they did and, uh, you know, the challenges that they faced, but also... Uh, just how uh, they they operated, including just uh, some of the entrepreneurial uh, roots uh, that we come from, which are important for inspiring some of our young people. Well, the inspirational issue is, uh, must be forefront in your mind so often because for many you're a role model. Is it? Do you find that a little pressurized at times? Uh, not at all. Clearly, I live my life and uh, have a very wonderful life, a very... Uh, full life really and and um, I try and do whatever I do the best I can and if it, that, that does inspire other people you know that's well and good uh, so I don't really feel a lot of pressure because it's nothing that I do uh, that you know feels remote and feels you know not sort of genuine on it's it's things that I just do because you know this is how I I live my life your colleague, Larry Dippenau, has got, a, uh, again, under the radar, a trust fund where he's helping a lot of people to, to improve themselves, a lot of young people. He spends time with them. Are you doing something similar? Yes, uh, we do a number of things as a family. Uh, for instance, uh, if you go through the history uh, that you referred to earlier, uh, we have a family farm in Ekopo, uh, which has been within the family since 1892, and uh, on that farm, my grandfather had built a school, and that school had become dilapidated over time. So we've worked with the government to rebuild the school, and in fact, it was officially opened a month ago. It now has capacity to um, to teach about 700, you know, primary school children, and we do quite a lot of things at the school. So I communicate with the school almost on a weekly basis, just in terms of providing support, direction. And, and other and other things that the school requires. Uh, but there are other things as well in which I'm involved. If you look at my extramural activities, uh, they have a lot to do with education. You know, I'm the t chairman of the Tutuga Bursary Fund, uh, which is a an initiative which was started by the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants, which in fact is quite successful in training young um would be chartered accountants, mainly kids coming from the rural areas. Um, and, you know, it's a very important initiative, and it, it's actually become a flagship uh, for a number of universities and the eight universities that are involved uh, in the initiative. And government also, through the Department of Higher Education, has recognized it as best practice in terms of how you train professionals. So I'm involved with that. so much that you're doing, and, and again, so much that isn't... Um highlighted in the public domain and I, I refer you to a discussion that I had with Herman Mashaba uh, a couple of weeks ago where he said he feels that business is losing the battle for the hearts and minds of the young people. He, he feels that when you uh, are listening to the media and somebody from Labour talks, they're the good guys and the business are the bad guys. How, how can this be addressed? How can, this, how can more of a balance be provided? Because if you don't have people like yourself, if you don't have entrepreneurs, you won't have jobs. I think it is an issue that uh, business as a whole and business people need to address, uh, which is a question of how we effectively communicate what we do. But we must also recognize that in an environment and in a society such as ours where you have large uh, gaps between the haves and the have-nots, 
sometimes it does feel for a lot of poor people and maybe even young people who may be unemployed. And as we know, I mean, we have about 46% unemployment, uh, which is affecting the youth. Uh, it, it does mean that for a lot of those people, whatever business does is not enough because they just still feel that uh, their lot has not improved. And, and it is important in that regard that uh, business con continues to communicate what they do uh, quite effectively. And sometimes I think what you do find is that uh, business communicates to itself. In other words, you'll find uh, reports in the financial media, as an example. But, you know, those people who are out in the townships who are unemployed do not read financial media. So we need to find effective platforms and mediums. Uh, to communicate with a lot of those people. And it's a challenge that uh, I think has been recognized by a lot of business people. Your life is, uh, is, is an example of discipline, of focus, of hard work, of all of those old-fashioned ethics and values that uh, our, our parents and maybe our grandparents used to teach us about. Uh, it is something that doesn't seem to be that uh, prevalent in society as a whole today, and particularly not amongst the young people. I would disagree slightly because I just take the example of the students that I was talking about, uh, the Tutuga students. You know, we select students that have potential that come from obviously uh, very poor backgrounds and with very poor education, but they have potential. And one of the things that we emphasize in the program, and we now have about 975 students in the program, uh, is that uh, they must understand that uh, we are trying to address in a three-year undergraduate degree uh, the gaps that have existed, in fact, ever since I started schooling. So you are trying to address in three years the gaps that have been left by 13 years of um, poor education. And therefore that they need to work hard. And they sign up to this, uh, to this working hard. And for instance, on Fridays, when other you know, students are busy partying and so on. Uh, these students are writing tests and they're doing tutorials and so on. Uh, so it's about increasing the time on tasks so that they can increase their chances of success. And as I said, I mean, out of the 975 students that we've got, uh, almost all of them work extremely hard. So I think given a chance and given the right kind of direction and motivation, young people can and do work hard. Maybe not in the same way as our generation, and I come from the baby boomers generation work. I mean, I look at my children. They work very hard, but they work very differently from how I, how I work. Uh, they lack their flexibility. They work when they feel, you know, they work. They don't want a rigid, for instance, hours uh, that may be imposed by companies and so on. So it's a different way of working hard. And sometimes we as uh, the uh, more senior generation need to understand what drives young people and try and, and, and adapt uh, the work environment, as an example, to cater for the needs of, of, of the young people. That's a message of great hope and one that uh, we don't hear too often. So you, you're excited about the young South Africans? Absolutely. You know, I just had an occasion and a privilege uh, last week to address uh, a whole number. There were more than 300 students uh, at the University of Johannesburg. And I do this quite often at different campuses as well. And each time... I finish interacting with young people, um, I never stop to be amazed about, you know, the talent that we have uh, in different campuses, in fact, uh, in the country, uh, which gives me a lot of hope for our future. I must agree with you. Certainly when, when I have that opportunity as well to engage with young people at uh, but primarily some of the better schools, it's, it, it blows you away. We, we've got a great future. And I suppose, uh, since we're looking back on your life, it wasn't that easy when you were coming through Fort Hare University, apartheid era, being a chartered accountant when it wasn't easy being a, a black man to achieve that. I didn't know any different. So in that regard, yes, when I look back now, it does look like it was very difficult. But because I was in it at the moment, um, at the time, I didn't really see that it was that, dif uh, that difficult. And I guess um, a lot has changed since then. And uh, I was very fortunate in that, um, you know, in my university education, as well as when I started work, uh, got a lot of support from a number of people. So my success was uh, because of a number of other people who supported me. Uh, so, and, and there were people who inspired me as well. 
So, which is why it's important to have role models in life, to have people that you look up to, uh, because you know they can make life a little easier in terms of uh, meeting some of the challenges that all of us meet uh, from time to time. I'd love to know uh, how you manage the work-life uh, balance with your wife, Judy Lamini, who's also an entrepreneur and a very successful one as well. Do you guys just talk business 24-7 in your home? No, we have a very full life, and it helps actually that we are both as busy as we are. Uh, you know, we talk about politics, we talk about business, we talk about our children, we talk about society generally, we talk about some of the initiatives that we have together. Uh, so we have absolutely a very, uh, a very rich life. And first, Rand, uh, the, the way it's positioned for the future, you're comfortable that you're going to be able to make a, a major contribution there to society and, in fact, uh, to, to perhaps the continent as well going ahead? We understand that the role of business is not just to make a profit and return dividends to our shareholders, that we have a broader uh, mandate to look after our broader stakeholders so that we can create an environment or make a contribution in creating an environment uh, which is sustainable, uh, which is why, I mean, even beyond uh, just some of the things that we are required to do, for instance, in terms of the financial sector charter, we go well beyond that uh, in addressing the challenges that particularly this country faces. But the same applies to all other jurisdictions in which you operate. We try and make a contribution in uplifting society generally, whilst at the same time it is important to be successful as a business and make a profit. And if you look at this country as an example, you know, we are involved in a number of things, mainly in education, because we believe education can change uh, the lot of a lot of people who may not have an opportunity right now. But beyond that, there are certain things that are part of the business that we do uh, that are important for society and for the development of this country as well as uh, the other markets in which we operate. For instance, uh, providing access uh, to those people who may not have access to financial services is a very important issue because not only does it grow our business, but it also makes sure that uh, we have society, a society which um, you know, can have some of the privileges that may not have been available to them in the past. So, so as you look ahead to the, uh, to the years beyond First Rand, to eight years plus into the future, are you going to go home to Crichton? Are you going back to the family, uh, the, the, the family uh, home? Uh, not really, but even though I do go back there on a very regular basis, I'll probably go uh, to Crichton and Klopo at least once every two months, uh, just to make sure that, for instance, we have a school and we're looking at a community centre and so on, and there are a number of things, we have a number of families that live on, on the family farm there. Uh, but uh, I think the fact of the matter is I think there are more opportunities for me uh, to make a contribution um, you know, in, in, in urban areas particularly, or operating from urban areas, because as I said earlier, I still see myself continuing to work for many years to come. So it may be very difficult for me to operate from that environment. I know you have managed to do that very well <laughs> on your side. I'm not sure how you actually do it. Uh, so I do myself, do, do see myself, um, you know, operating from Johannesburg, from for many years, even though I may go to Durban and I may go to, down to Crichton. Uh, but yes, I think the platform will be uh, the Johannesburg platform. Well, we look forward to following your career, and perhaps in 10 years' time we'll have another discussion in our Upper Echelon program. Cesar Nguxana, the Chief Executive of First Rand. Thank you. Upper Echelon was brought to you by Deloitte. For innovative thinking and thorough strategic planning, turn to Deloitte.